Hello everyone. Good morning. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. It's a wet Saturday in Lagos. Wow. I hope you're having a nice time. It's another edition of ATP Live. And today we'll be talking about a very interesting topic that has been on so many parents' minds. We're always worrying about our babies. But guess what? ATP is here to answer our questions and soothe in our hearts. All right. Today we'll be talking about teething in babies. Wow, teething. I'm sure so many people are excited to hear that. Dr. Bim is in the house. She's going to teach us, educate us, and, you know, tell us the right things. <laughs> and, you know, cancel a lot of meats on teething. Dr. Bimi, good morning, Ma. Uh, good morning, okay. uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to ATP Life. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, thank you so much for everyone joining us. Uh, if you have your question on City, we are here to answer them. And I said that today's post is, I mean, today's ATP Life is going to be it's every shaking because we are going to deal with lots of meat <laughs> busting. Yeah, we're going to be busting lots of meat. So if you are just joining us, you are welcome. I can see so many people already joining us. Vera, Ngozi, Oza, Zime, you're welcome. Uh, so if you are joining us on ATP uh, Watch Party, you're welcome. Uh, so get ready, drop your questions on time so that we can answer them. Share the video with friends, family, invite everyone to join us so that we can deal with this issue of sitting. Once and for all, you're welcome to ATP Live. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Bimi. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget to invite your friends to join. Share the video so that we can learn. Sitting is one topic that I know. <laughs> I wish one, I hope one hour will be enough, Dr. Bimi, to handle hope, this topic. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, too. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us. All right, yeah. Dr. Bimi, sitting. Will you, will you explain? Okay, what exactly is sitting? Maybe we should start like that. Please, layman's okay. language so that we understand. <laughs> of course, well. of course. No, that's, that's what we do on ATP. All right, so uh, basically, um, we know what are teeth. <laughs> we all have teeth. Yes. And so when babies are born, majority of babies are not born with teeth. Uh, I deliberately use the word majority of babies because some babies are actually born with their teeth as well, what we call natal mm -hmm. tooth. So, but maybe 99 percent of babies are born without it and of course i'm sure you've not seen an adult without it so it, it means at a point during their development the babies will develop it so is that just what it is the process where the babies that are born without uh teeth begin to bring out their teeth you know and usually uh it's a process that actually starts around six to seven months and they bring out what we call the first set of teeth what we call the meek teeth or the temporary teeth and about 20 of them in all that happens over the first uh, from six months to about 18 to 20 years and by the time the baby is about six to seven years again they will begin to lose all those uh, baby teeth and then they begin to have what we call the permanent teeth so eventually like adults they will end up having 32 teeth so Basically, that's what uh, teaching is all about. So it's a very simple process. It's a physiological process. It is a normal process. <laughs> it's just the same way you have a baby being born and the baby could, is completely a place, could do nothing. And with time, the baby begins to hard ways, they begin to grow bigger, they begin to yeah. sit, they begin to have what we call milestones development, they begin to stand, they begin to walk. Just the same way, sitting is just one of those milestones that you know children um, develop. As it's one of those milestones of development in children, so it's a normal thing and it's a physiological thing. Yeah, so that's sitting in simple terms. Thank you, Doctor Bimi. Thank you, Dr. So I picked something from what you said. It's a normal thing like walking, crawling, sitting. Yeah, but does it come with a form of pain? Okay, now um, I'm going to start uh, addressing these issues uh, slowly. But just to say that those who are watching us, please start dropping your questions now so that we can take them. I don't want a situation that we have to be rushing through your questions at the end. Okay, so sitting is a normal physiological process. It's a norm when we say physiological, it means it is not a disease. 
it is not a, a it's, it's not supposed to come with any form of illness or pain or anything like that of course you know your teeth are like bony structures and they are going to pull push through what look like a, a flesh the gums something soft so you can imagine so definitely there, there may be a little bit of discomfort when the teeth are breaking through the, the, the what we call the the enamel the the the, the, the uh, what the crown the parts of the teeth that we can see because actually the teeth is a living structure is actually more than the white stain that you are saying there are other parts of the teeth that are eating down in the gum so when that white part the crown when it's pushing through it, it, it's pushing through the flesh of the gum so definitely there may be a little bit of discomfort but it is it is just during that process and it's once it's out does it so and it's not a discomfort that will cause fever cause illnesses or any that kind of a thing like we said most babies bring out their teeth without mothers knowing what that, they just woke up one morning and discovered that the babies have teeth yes. and there's nothing wrong with the baby so most babies there's nothing wrong with them they bring it out and you may not even know when it happened so um like we said it's a normal uh process so i, I think that's what we, i just want to say about that so uh i think we'll begin to have our questions so we'll begin to uh, okay, deal with okay. one by one. Uh, thank you for all those who send greetings let's just start um, dealing with okay. the questions this is from a moment okay must the baby pull during teaching hmm. i'm sure she's okay. asking for so many people <laughs> Yes. So one of the things uh, mothers think is that anytime a baby is uh, that there, there are symptoms that goes with sitting, you know, so there are symptoms that make them know that a child is sitting. Yes, there are some symptoms that will make you know a child is sitting or a child is about to bring out their uh, cut the first set of teeth. But pulling or watery stool is not one of them. So I'm just going to be taking the meat first. Uh, before we start talking about what's the number, so teeth, I mean, having watery stool is not a sign of teething, and the babies don't really need to pull during teething. So, uh, among me, I hope that is clear. Uh, <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Okay, yes, I can. Yeah, I hope our internet cooperates today. <laughs> okay, we have another question. Yeah. Okay, the next question is from Uzuagu Chidima. And Chidima is asking, can you see it now, Kwe? No. Okay, I, I think well, there seems to be it. It. okay. There seems to be a gap between when we put the questions up when they show. I think we'll take that up with the, with the up. Okay, so what's the sign we're likely to see when a baby is sitting? So that's a very, very important question. So, like we said, the baby bringing out it is just like any other things that they do, like any other part of the development. So sometimes, but because, like I told you, the 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 the, the bone is pushing through the gum. So some babies may have a little bit of discomfort. Uh, usually, they may some of them may start, you know, scratching on the gums a lot more. Some of them may begin to drool a little bit, not like they are drooling and soaking so many uh, beeps or things like that. Just a little bit. Some of them may have a little bit of they don't want to eat or such or they may actually go the opposite way and they are sucking more because the sucking is actually like a pleasurable thing and they are using mm -hmm. it to kind of uh, max the uh the feeling of discomfort as it is coming out that may feel a little bit warm uh, a little bit warm not like they are having a uh, eye fever or anything like that just uh usually we say it shouldn't it shouldn't be up maybe 0 0.1 degree you know some just a little bit warm not like they are really very hot or something like that so that those are all uh some of the symptoms that we can get in a child uh who is sitting so and that does not mean we need to start doing anything it, it's just a little sign for us to know that the child is um is sitting so uh so those are some of the little signs that we can see when children are about to bring out their tooth okay are you back with us 
Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. I think we lost you a little bit. Okay, so I've answered Swagu's question. So we just move on again. So the next question. All right. Are you able to see it now? No. Okay. I think you should just take it. If you have so many questions, so that's yeah. not... Okay. So um, Linda is asking, my baby is six months and yet to grow since Yes, that's another question that mothers like to ask us a lot. So teaching usually starts around six to seven months. But like everything I tell mothers, everything is an average. It's an average. It doesn't mean that if your baby does not bring out it at six to seven months, six maybe months. it's normal. I made mention at the beginning that some babies actually are born with it. So maybe it's coming born with it. <laughs> so we are not, it does not mean they are evil babies. It does not mean they are <laughs> demonic. It does not mean they are witches or wizards. They are normal babies. It happens. Normal babies. But what we normally do is to take out those states because it affects breastfeeding and it can be loose. Mm -hmm. And if it is loose, it can get dislodged and the baby can swallow it and aspiration. That's what we want to avoid. But there's nothing absolutely wrong with it. So I'll, and usually the dentist will even make sure that that's not the baby's permanent tooth that there's some mm -hmm. other teeth below it before they take it out. Mm -hmm. So that is not possible. Mm -hmm. So your babies usually start teething at six to seven months, but some babies may not bring out their first tooth on say one year, and that is absolutely normal as well. So some babies are a little bit slower, some babies are a little bit uh, faster. Doesn't mean some babies even bring out their teeth at some months. Just don't worry. And I always make a joke and I tell mothers that I've never seen an adult without it. Without it. Yeah. Actually, that's the answer is always good. So if there's never an adult without it, then that means there's no way um, your baby will not have um, uh, it. So it's just that like it may be a little bit. But usually, we doctors or pediatricians, we will not worry about your baby not having it. Even after okay. one year. and so what you need to do, but the dentists have recommended that you should see you should um you should bring the babies for the first dental appointments when they are one year old. So at the age of one, okay. you definitely go and see your dentist. So so whether your baby has brought out or not at one year old, you just take them to see uh the dentist. So that's just okay. the answer to that. So if I see a question that I've answered before, because I know that some of them will be similar questions. We'll be seeing I'll questions. I'll yes. post them, but I will pass them. So Adem Salah, I think I've answered your question. What are the signs or the symptoms of this? Yes. And then you say, what is the solution to it? Yeah, the solution to it. When you, when you say what is the solution to it, I think you are assuming that it is a disease or it's a bad thing. <laughs> Nothing is further from the truth. Sitting is as normal as your baby uh, walking as your baby sitting, as your baby doing any other thing, it's a normal thing and it's not a disease. So, it's when I even say signs okay. of sitting, they are not symptoms like a disease, so and they don't have any solution. And you don't need to do anything about sitting. Please, this habit of mothers giving sitting powder, I know I'm going to shake a lot of tables today. Please stop it, <laughs> nothing for sitting. And I always ask you, do you give them? uh sitting powder why don't you give walking powder why don't you give a uh, writing powder or whatever you don't do all that because you expect them to do all those things so why should you also give them sitting powder because this is also not just a normal process so it's not a disease and they don't they don't have uh any illness attached and i will tell you why babies tend to become a little bit more sick when they are doing it's not the sitting it's because i will tell you why let me just quickly answer some of the okay. questions again uh, I can take them from the watch party. I can see some of the questions. Uh, well, okay, but let me, because we are showing it on live, let me just read them here. So, Oma okay. Mumi is asking, must they maybe defecate continuously during city? Everybody yeah, just asking okay. about this city. Uh, Oma Mumi again is asking, okay, the same question. Uh, must they maybe defecate yes. Okay, so, diarrhea, cooling, pooing, uh, defecating, whatever the times people are calling it has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. The babies don't... I've had my babies at least, and I know many mothers have had their babies as well, and they've gone through that process of sitting without any issue at all, without anything, any pooing, any stooling, any diarrhea. It is it because it, Most times, the reason why these babies have these things is because 
number one, when babies are uh, uh, um, about to bring out their teeth, their gums could yes. be a little bit itchy. And uh, usually, like I told you, it's around six to seven months. That period when babies actually start to bring out their teeth is a very unique period because so many things are going on at that same time. Now, that is the end of exclusive breastfeeding. So mothers yes. actually stop yes. breastfeeding. Most mothers are introducing complementary food. And if you remember from our discussion, some mothers don't get it right. In terms of what you give, the way you mix, some people just go to formula alone, as if formula is, and then they start using bottle. Even some people put cereals in bottle, and we always frown on bottle feeding because it's very difficult to clean bottle properly. That is the time you are introducing them to new food. Some of these hygienic processes around preparation of food and all those things, those are the time that those things are going on. So some mothers are a little bit careless about that process, you know, and using bottle to feed another. So it introduces charms to the baby. And, you know, the breastfeeding, because breast meat is sterile from the mother, straight from mother to the baby, absolutely no contamination, nothing. Most babies are fine when they are in exclusive breastfeeding, no sickness, nothing. But now you are starting to do complementary feeding. So are you very, you know, are you observing the process of hygiene? Some of you are using bottle, you are using bottle to, for the milk or bottle for the cereals. We, we don't want you to use bottle because it's very difficult to clean bottle and the bacteria multiply. And some mothers will make a bottle in the morning and feed the baby in the night with that same bottle. It's, it's already been colonized by bacteria. Those are the things that make the baby to have diarrhea. It has absolutely nothing to do with sitting. Also, that's the process that the baby can sit and baby is now reaching out and touching so many things. So they bring out toys. All these toys is falling down. Some of you are using, uh, what do you call it, pacifiers and all those eaters. And if you are not sterilizing them, you the, the drops on the floor, the baby picks it up again, puts it in their mouth. I mean, we've seen baby mothers saying your baby putting pool in their mouth and all those things. This is the period that all those things are. This are the period that babies are being small to germs in the environment. And so if you are not uh taking actions to make sure that you are uh you, you know you are uh, observing the hygienic processes and all that, it's very, very possible for the baby to pick up germs. And when the baby pick up germs, then they can have uh, gastroenteritis, what is to as a result. Okay, so this is what is happening during this period. Okay, so basically we're saying that this period, it's not, it's nothing to do with the sitting itself, but it has to do with exposure of the baby to germs, okay. infections, and this is the reason why these baby have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. of, of course, it's also the same period they are bringing out their teeth. So mothers just make the uh, association and say, it is titty, it is titty. It is not the titty. Most babies bring out their teeth absolutely fine. No diarrhea, nothing. It is all the other process. And that is why some babies uh, or some mothers will have their teeth and there's no problem, no diarrhea, no hospital. Disease. But some mothers, their babies, they, some mothers even say their baby can eat sand. And then they will say it's part of why they should die. It's part of what they should. It's part of it. I mean, I mean, and then you are not complaining that your baby is having diarrhea and calling it baying. It does not do with baying. It is not a baying. It does not do with baying. It is your. You have to watch the, the hygienic process. So you need to sterilize the toys, the things the babies are putting in their mouth. You need to use uh, plates, spoon, cup, spoon to feed the baby, not bottles, because it's easier to wash them. It's easier to sterilize them, it's really to, you know, and those are the things that, and then you prepare the meal just when needed. Not that you prepare a pot in the morning and give the baby at night. It's to be colonized by bacteria. Those are the things that we're talking about. So it has nothing to do with, uh, absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with um, uh, teaching process itself. Okay, so Charity is asking a question. My daughter has four silver molars. What is silver molars? Um, teeth on a real molar. Will she lose those molars with the silver molars attached to them, or do we need to take them off before they can fall out? She has said to lose and make teeth, and others are coming up. I know gum is a bit swollen. Is the molar about to pop up? Anyway, uh, so charity, your question, uh, I think you really need to see a dentist now. I think Dr. Buki will be very happy to see you because they need to examine your baby. They need to decide whether, you know, I, I think what you are trying to tell me is like a child with over, overcrowded seats. Okay. So overcrowded seats, the dentists know what to do. 
sometimes they may need to remove some of them that's unnecessary but they will see so i would say in that case you really need to take her to see a dentist and then uh they will answer that Okay, okay. I think I'm back up now. Okay. This is Pamela. Pamela. Yeah. Okay. Great, Great job you're doing. Please go with your advice. My, ba my baby is nine months and he vomits often after feeding. Your doctor asked us to run a test and he was treated for infection with antibiotics, but the vomiting still occurs. Okay. Um, uh, Pamela, thank you for your question. Even though uh, I think mm -hmm. that was um but, exactly. <laughs> but i will still answer the question since you've asked us um vomiting in children there are so many things that cause vomiting in children and we rightly said it would be an effective process ongoing and i'm happy you've seen a doctor and if your if your child receives vomiting it could even be food intolerance or something so there are so many causes so what i normally recommend is that if you have seen a doctor before and they treat your baby for a particular uh, condition and the symptoms persisted, you really need to go back for what we call like, what I call follow up. So you need to go back to see the doctors and let them now um, uh, decide again. Maybe they see something else. But from from a pediatrician perspective, I think you really need to watch what kind of food you are giving the baby. Are you still giving bottle? You know, I just answer that. Please don't give bottle. Don't give watery pap and things like that. You should uh, give your baby. Um, uh, uh cereals and uh, or what we call a like complementary feeding from the uh plates and the cup and the spoon and, and all those processes and all that then try different food if it is a particular food in particular that normally cause the child to uh have the uh vomiting then you may want to stop that because sometimes some children don't like a particular food so those are some of the things that i'm just trying to you know Reason now with you, what are the things oh, you can request? But I think the best option is for you to go back to see your, your doctor and let them help you with that. Thank you. All right, this is from up here. A baby of nine months is yet to have any teeth. Is there any yeah. cause to worry? I think the baby has answered that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, I think I've answered that. So, if it's at one year, we will not worry until if it's one year before we start worrying. So I think you should go and um, and and see a dentist after one year. Don't worry. I've always told you guys there's no other without it. So your baby will bring out it. So it starts as most babies start at six to seven. That's the average. But some babies don't do it as one year. And the dentist is still not worried. But they want you to see them as one year. All right, let's move on. Thank you, Dr. This is also from a mom. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Most times, yeah. baby poop continuously and sometimes yeah. with temperature. Most times, yeah. you discover that it's the teeth that shrink come out. Okay, yeah. So, thank you, Omo Omi Shaleba. And I'm, I'm coming for those of you that have crutches as well because <laughs> I think you're part of our problems. Yes, I know. I've used a crutch before. And like I rightly said, crutches on its own is a risk factor for a baby's even having all those diarrhea and all that because you really need to exercise a lot of um a lot of caution washing hands very in between babies i've seen people they just feed one baby drop that baby take the next baby feed the baby are you using bottles to feed those babies what kind of toys are they playing with and these are the babies where if one baby has something the other babies have the, there's a lot of association and i think you, i'm happy that you started listening to me from the beginning and i've told you the reason why it is not because the teeth is trying to come out the teeth doesn't cause fever the teething doesn't cause diarrhea because other people have their babies have their teeth and they don't have all those things there's nothing yeah. about teething process that will make a baby to have diarrhea and there's nothing about the teething process that will make the baby to have uh fever eye fever mm -hmm. so a baby who is, who is about to bring out their teeth may be itching and if they're in the crash and they're playing with your toys and you know other babies are also there the risk of transfer of germs and all that is quite high so it's it's, it's nothing to do with the teaching i i i i that's what i just want to say so i know mothers do a lot of associations but sometimes some of those associations are not uh are not correct so it is not because of the um okay so it is not because of that so I was, she was, she has given me more, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Shulebo is telling us now that some feeding bottles are so dirty. Can you imagine? So a mother has come to Christ already with a dirty feeding bottle. I mean, I'm even mm -hmm. saying that I don't want you to even use 
what looks like a Box green box. Not even talk of the one that is already dead that you have to now watch again. What's uh among me? I think you would do us a favor by not using bottles in your crutch. Let the mothers bring a plate, okay. have a plate and all that, and you make the food. And you should do the food before you feed the baby. All those ones that their mothers are prepared from the house and bring to the crash, and then you're giving them, they're already colonized with bacteria. So those are the things that's making those babies have fever and diarrhea. It has nothing to do with the tasting process. I, I, you can try some of these things, follow this principle, exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months, and then even the dentist uh, recommended that you don't, they don't want the babies using bottles and all that. It's, 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 it's also made with a risk of dental creating for the new teeth. So you make use plates. Let them let them take complimentary food and let it be eaten from the place just made before the babies are going to. Even if you are going to drink milk, let them drink it from a cup, a specific cup rather from and let it be washed immediately, let it be made and let it be clean. And please let your staff let them wash their hands often between babies. And when some baby is having fever, a baby is having diarrhea, that baby should not come to the crash because that baby is going to infect all the other babies in the crash. So those are the things that we, we are talking about here. All right. I think I'll stop taking questions about diarrhea and diarrhea. I yeah, think yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Charity is asking the question about the artificial mothers. Okay. So, mothers. It's just, yeah. so you've already seen a dentist. So fine. That's that's great. So uh, all you need to do is to go back to your dentist and it will sort out what they started. That's it. So thank you so much. Yeah. Uma is congratulating us. Thank you, Uma. Thank you for watching. Um, Authority is thanking us. Thank you for watching. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Charity said, okay. Yeah, Charity is giving us more information. She said, okay. The child doesn't have a Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I breastfed her for two years and she started having problems with some of her teeth which mm. could not really be explained by our dentist. They just said it is the breast milk that mm. caused it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's mm -mm. just an artificial one, artificial <laughs> real ones. No, 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 forget you can disagree with you. No, I disagree completely with that statement. <laughs> breast milk is not going to damage your baby's teeth. No, not at all. Okay. And um, I, I really say you should see a pediatric dentist not a general dentist this time around uh, because obviously your dentist don't know what is causing your teething problem of your baby so i would recommend you go to Lutz. uh you can post your question directly on our group so that dr buki who is our pediatric specialist in pediatric dentistry not every dentist is for children some dentists are just general dentists so she's a dentist for children she can help you and you may want to go see them at low. So I don't know whether you're in Lagos, but I, our teaching hospital who have a pediatric dentists. I think that would be the best option. Yeah. Okay, okay, so I think I've answered all the questions I have. So please drop your questions now. Uh, those on the watch okay. party, please help us bring the questions. Now let's go on. Uh, let me begin to address some of the myths again um, on teaching and all okay. that. On so a lot of people have asked me about diarrhea. They've asked us about diarrhea. So that's interesting because that shows that that's one of the things that most people believe is the cause of sleeping or the symptom of sleeping. And we've addressed that. Now, the next one I want to address is fever. So sleeping doesn't cause fever. Sleeping doesn't cause fever. So it may be a little bit warm, but not warm like they are having 39 degrees or 40 degrees. And, and not quite. the reason why I think I need to address this myth is that as a pediatrician, it's, 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 it's something that bothers us a lot because our babies die a lot from sicknesses because mothers are assuming that they are tissues. Yeah, they make a lot of assumptions. And a baby is having fever, like a mom was saying, a baby is having fever and having diarrhea. They will not take the child to the hospital because they think it, the child is just sitting. That child is not just teaching, the child is ill. I always tell mothers, teaching should be the last thing on your mind. You know, I, I there was a time I wrote a memo to mothers. I say, if I get a dollar for every time a mother asks me whether <laughs> that is wrong with her child is due to teaching, I'll, I'll be a multimillionaire in dollars. Because everybody would think, oh, my baby is having cough, is it teaching? My baby is having diarrhea, is it teaching? My baby is having fever. Is it teasing? My baby is having vomiting. Is it teasing? No, it is not teasing. This 
skin doesn't cause all those symptoms. And the first thing, in a baby is sick, a baby is having fever, baby, please don't even put it in as one of your differential diagnosis. Don't put it there at all. Think of any other thing else but sitting. Because if you think it's sitting, you will not do the right thing, number one. So mothers will say, oh, it's just sitting, leave it. And that's how babies are dying from diarrhea. You know, the first uh, uh, group discussion we had this year, I talked about how to keep our babies healthy. And I was talking about the things that are killing our children. And I was mentioning things that are killing children are not things that are difficult to treat. There are things like diarrhea, there are things like pneumonia. There are things like simple things that all of us can treat. Even mothers know how to treat diarrhea. They know how to do it. Um, but why is it killing babies? Because when babies have diarrhea, the mother thinks it's sitting and they will not go to the hospital. When the baby is having cough, it's sitting until it becomes a pneumonia and the child dies. So that is why it is something we as pediatricians we really like to address. So when the baby is sick, I beg you mothers, when your baby has sick, don't say it is sitting. Please go to the hospital. But think of any other thing else apart from sitting and take them to the hospital. That is the first thing I really want to address. Now, before I go on to take more questions, the next thing I want to address is this sitting powder issue. Because I've seen mothers who from the day one, okay, from day one, the baby they start giving sitting mister, sitting whatever. And it's the most highly unnecessary drug ever that people give to their children. Sitting mistress. The most dangerous, highly unnecessary medication. And I always throw a challenge to mothers. Go and look. All this in the stand for you as sitting mistress. What is inside? Go and look at it. I'm not going to mention any names. But you go and look at it. What do they always have inside? Racetamol? Racetamol, yeah. Either Fenigan or any of those things. Oh, uh, if it's in Nigerian, if it's in Nigerian one, you will add maybe chloroquine. Number one, yeah. they are putting prasamol in doses that are so standard. That's number one. Number two, they are giving children. So what does this system do? They just make your baby to sleep off and they take care of pain and all that. Now, that is not even the issue. But the issue is that mothers give these things to the babies continuously. For days, for months, for weeks. Whereas the advert for you, even the advert for paracetamol that is allowed on the TV says, if after two days your baby is not well, go to the hospital. We've had a discussion on poisoning. There is no drug that is not a poison. I want mothers to take note of that. There is no drug that is not a poison. What makes the difference between a drug and the, the poisonous effect is the dose. Is the dose so prasamol is a good drug, it's good for fever, it's good for pain. But when you take prasamol every day for months, it's mm -hmm. going to damage the liver of that baby. It's going to be prasamol in a high dose will cause liver damage. So when mothers give these drugs to their babies continuously, they are damaging the liver. That's what happened. Now, uh, the other time we all of you know my Peking saga in Nigeria. Now, my Peking is a titty mixture. It got contaminated with methanol, something that they use in, uh, in the car industry for the, uh, for the car or something like that. We all we lost so many children from renal failure. Now, all these babies would not have died if their mothers were not planning to give a TT mixture. All these mothers were given TT mixture in the, because they want to treat TT, which I don't know why they are treating because it's negative. And in the process, they took a medication that got contaminated. I was part of the management. We treated so many babies, when I fell off, almost all those babies died. It was, it was horrendous. But you can go and go with you can read about it. My Peking saga in Nigeria. Now, all this would not have happened if we don't give to Timmy to our babies. Okay? So what I normally tell mother is that if you think your baby is going to tease, wait for the baby to start teasing. Wait for the baby to not have the fever, then you can give your paracetamol. There is no need for you to start giving the paracetamol and the fenigan, that is, and the chloroquine that they are putting together and sending for you as sitting minister. There is no need for you to start giving it from day one to one year. You are damaging organs. You are damaging organs in this innocent babies. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is a very serious. If that's the only thing I'm going to achieve today and convince one of you to stop giving sitting minister, I will feel very fulfilled because. It is very, very important. So please, teaching don't cause any, any illness to babies. It is not a disease. 
it does not require any medication. So if you are one of those people and all the grannies and all those people, that is, ah, this is how we gave you in your own time. And okay, I always tell well, them, I was going to say grannies. <laughs> That is why all the babies were also dying in those times. That's why most of those babies we have higher mortality than now. Mm -hmm. And that's why people were having many babies there because they are like, they are not sure whether this one is going to survive or not. Because some of these things are the things that were killing our children that time. You understand? So please, message, take one message today. Teaching is a normal process, it does not cause anything to your baby. If your baby is having any symptoms, don't say it is cheating. Take your child to the hospital. If you, and don't give any teaching mister. Three messages take home. Please don't forget. I think that is what I really want to to really I like. Yeah. Now Thank let's you. go back to our question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, so this is a very important question. Okay. This is from Vakari. When can when one can start brushing baby seats? So the dentist recommends that you start brushing from the day the first teeth come out, uh, the first tooth, so the very first one. Please start brushing. So even before then, uh, the dentist recommends that you clean the gums and the tongue with a soft cloth and water, not uh, glycerin, not uh, other mouthwash, please. Don't go and burn the baby's tongue for us. Just soft clothes and water. But once they bring out the first tooth, you start using toothbrush. There are very soft toothbrush. There are some of them I can even put in your finger like this, and you can just. And it's a very tiny dose of toothpaste. And for the babies, it is what we call the meek toothpaste because of the amount of fluoride inside. So there's a meek toothpaste. That's what you should use. And don't look at the adverts on the TV. I've been telling the, the dental association that they need to go and, and address that advert. People, people will put a whole long rope of paste and cover it up again. The, 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 the people that are advertising, they just want, they want you to buy toothpaste so that you can keep buying more. All your baby needs is just a tiny grain is it like a grain of rice a that's what they say yes so please that's what you grain should use so don't go and follow those adverts on tv and put a <laughs> a longer rope of uh, <laughs> okay so thank you okay so somebody is asking question um jay you know it's not a teaching question but i will answer it because i i really feel like you answered that question i say my baby is three weeks and he's having cancer I think I need to do a a, a a ATP life on drugs and mothers. And I keep telling mothers that, look, everything is not about drugs. Everything is it's not everything we prescribe drugs for. That's another question. In fact, next to the teaching question, that's the second most popular question mothers ask pediatricians. My baby has what can I use? What drug should I use? My baby is sweating more than uh, uh, just no, out and no. baby is sweating. What drug should I use? My baby is drinking too much water. What drug should I use? Oh, My baby is playing on. What drug should I use? My baby doesn't know book. What drug should I use? I'm not seriously. <laughs> Everything is good drugs. NJ. Anyway, I'm just exaggerating now. But basically, I'm just trying to drive on my point that look, everything is not drugs. Most times as a pediatrician, I am happy. If you don't need to give drugs to your babies at all, I'm so happy. So, and like a baby with three weeks, your baby just needs for you to breastfeed the baby, keep the baby warm. I hope you are not giving formula. If you are doing formula, because ARI or what we call acute respiratory tract infection is common in babies who are not on exclusive breastfeeding, babies who are exposed to smoke, babies who are exposed to uh cold you know baby is not being kept warm those are the risk factors so i want you to address those risk factors. why is the baby having cancer at three weeks so it is one of those things maybe not it's still breastfeeding maybe being kept warm are you exposing the baby to people with um hen? all those people that come to visit you or maybe they will come and cover and give her a baby that's where the baby is getting the cancer from so address or address all that then your baby doesn't need any medication please uh jane three weeks so don't give them any medication unless a pediatrician prescribes it. and i know a pediatrician like me or any other people would not prescribe any medication for a, a three weeks without fever only cata 
they're not going to give you any drug. It looks like it's a viral thing mm -hmm. and your baby doesn't need anything. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, Sylvia is saying thank you. Questions again. Okay. Thank you. I hope I've, I've uh, okay. I think I've answered all the questions on on set. If I've not answered your question, please uh, send it to us. Okay. So while we're waiting okay. for one yeah. question, uh, we continue to address all the myths. So I've addressed. I have the question on the watch party. I don't think I've taken it. Okay. From yeah. Go ahead. Colo Okay, my baby of three months has refused to suck. But when I express it, he will take it. What do I do? Because I'm tired of expressing milk. It's no longer flowing like it used to. So the question I want to know is why your baby not sucking? And I think what has happened to your baby, I assume you're giving bottle to that baby as well. If you are giving bottle, your baby has what we call nipple confusion. Correct me if I'm wrong. So just update me so that I can address. Number one thing, most and no matter cause what you've just told us is what we call nipple confusion. So you are giving both the bottle and you are giving a nipple. And now the bottle of the, the normal bottle, the teeth, and most of you will make that big grand hole eh, on top of it. It's very easy to suck milk from it because it make just rush into the baby's mouth. Maybe doesn't need to do too much work. It will just swallow in the milk. The milk is flowing. Now for a baby that is on breast milk, the milk to get out the milk is work is sucking the baby has to draw it out so and i say very intelligent nigerian oh. child the baby would prefer not to go for the hard work it would prefer the easy way out so that's what normally happens so most babies prefer to take from bottle that's one of the reasons we say don't give bottle let them suck directly from the breast and another reason is that we also need to make sure that you are properly positioning your baby for breastfeeding because if your baby is sucking on the nipple which is what most mothers do the baby sucking on the nipple will not get any milk and it's very frustrating to the baby so the baby will realize that when i suck on this nipple i don't get milk but when i suck on the bottle i get milk so the baby just prefer to suck on the one that <laughs> so because the milk bank the way the milk is stored in the breast is not on the nipple it is in what we Called the areola, you no. Know, after the nipple, mm -hmm. that black area of your breast, you know, yeah. is the way they make it. So the baby must put that part mm -hmm. in the mouth. And so when you are, and most baby, when they are rushing, they just grab the nipple and that. But you have to depress the tongue and put, make sure that the areola you are seeing that black, almost all of it is inside the mouth of the baby. Mm -hmm. So the minute the baby puts mouth or the gum on that part the milk will just be flowing straight into his mouth then people will not be frustrated so for the more on that one because it's not really a teaching question you really need to go and watch our breastfeeding videos we have breastfeeding we have a unit a learning unit on breastfeeding on atp yeah. so if you go through all our breastfeeding video very 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 educative one you will understand uh, what we're talking about all right okay okay Do we have more questions yeah. Yeah, we have more questions and uh, please always keep your questions short sure. one or two lines don't tell us too much stories <laughs> mm. yeah okay, she's saying a nine months baby has eight teeth already, eight teeth already. Mm. and she's bringing out one i hope that is okay the way she grows but it's too quickly yeah okay i know what that's it no one likes it's trouble <laughs> no one likes it <laughs> The mothers worry a lot about anything. I love the mothers. Eh? So some mothers are worried that their own seven months old does not have any teeth at all. I don't know mother is worried whether her own the teeth are too many. It's too so well. <laughs> or they are too easy. But no, please don't worry. Anyway, don't mind us. We are just um, keeping it light and fun. So um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your baby having. I told you that some babies are even born with their teeth. Hey, let me address a means while we are on that one. So babies bring out normally babies bring out the lower incisors, the lower teeth first, then they bring mm -hmm. up. Now some babies mm -hmm. actually bring out the upper teeth first, and people in mm -hmm. my part of the world, eh, mm -hmm, they say they are demonic, they are alien, okay, they are evil. Please, they are wicked. <laughs> uh, please don't, don't and uh, whatever they say will come to pass. And please, that is a myth, old wives' fable. There's nothing wrong. Whether it's the first 
uh, some people will bring out one seat and uh, one, I mean, two seats at a time, maybe two down, two up. But some people will bring out all their eights at once. All those things are normal variation, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So don't worry whether it's the upper teeth that came first, whether it's the lower teeth, whether it's eight or ten or twenty all at once. As long as we have teeth, we are happy. So I think I have answered that question. So Ikeolua, your baby is doing well. I am very happy. No need to worry about it. I think we've answered those. Any more questions from the watch party? That's why I begin to do more busting of me. No, okay. So let's go. Let's go on with the means busting. So we talk about teaching is a normal process. We talk about no need for teaching mister. We talk about the fact that um, whether it's the first, whether it's the upper teeth that came first or the lower teeth, it has nothing to do with it. We talk about the fact that teaching doesn't cause diseases, it doesn't cause illnesses in children, but the, the period when babies begin to bring out teeth is also the period that they can have um, yeah, at more risk of having infections. I didn't finish that thought process, but I can handle it more now. So at six to seven months, that's when mothers stop breastfeeding, they start giving complementary food, risk number one. Two, at six to seven months, that's when the babies are sitting and exploring the environment the more. That's when they put everything they take is in their mouth. Everything they take in them, and that's when mothers really need to do more hygienic. Uh, they really need to be more. So you need to make sure you're cleaning your floors. You need to make sure that the toys are being washed and sterilized as well. So those are the things that is putting these babies at risk of infection. Also, one thing that also happened at six to seven months is that uh, the mother's antibodies. Uh, you know, most of the time, babies are well in the first six, seven months because the mothers. Uh, pass antibodies to them. You know, you as a mother, you already have a lot of uh, what we call immune immunity against many diseases. So when you are breastfeeding, that's one of the reasons we say we should breastfeed. Yeah. You know, one of the things you give to your babies through breast milk mm -hmm. is not just the food. It is those protection, those antibodies against diseases. So you are giving all those antibodies to the babies and the babies are fine. They are protected. Now, at six months, you stop breastfeeding exclusively. Most mothers, you almost give only little or no breast milk. So the protection the babies yeah, are getting course. from the antibodies are not as mm -hmm. much used. Even the ones that have been stored in them in the beginning, because those antibodies need to be uh, going down, they need to be reduced. Okay. And that's why we say you should give immunization, like we discussed last week, so that immunization will, will make sure the babies start producing their own antibodies. So those antibodies are going low. So the babies actually has more risks of infection at that period because of all these factors. And so when they are exposed to germs, then that's also worsening the whole thing. So those are, that's the reason why uh, babies are more at risk of having um, infection. So it is nothing to do with the milk, I mean, the teeth coming out. Okay, so, and I think that's one thing you really need to um, understand. So it is, it is not properly. Yeah, so basically that's it. I don't know whether there's any other issue on teaching that I still need to uh, address. Any other okay. Meaning? The questions I have here, they're not on teaching. Breast okay. milk. Yeah. Someone but, saying she has twin babies and she's worried that the breast milk is not enough for the two of them. Yeah, it's not enough. I mean, go on ATP, you see mothers with twins, just goggle twins breastfeeding. On ACP, you will see. I mean, search for twins and breast. Don't be encouraged. You see, most people, most of us, we are scared, or people tend to scare you. I find that most mothers that don't uh, breastfeed is not because uh, of anything, it's because of other neighbors that are scaring them off. I mean, hey, twins, ah, you can't do it. So you can't do it. If you believe you can do it, you can do it. So there are mothers that have exclusively breastfed their babies, and they've come to tell us on ATP. And one of the reasons, one of one of the things that normally Gladys has, some of them will say is because the way we encourage them on ATP is the reason why they were able to uh, breastfeed their babies. Yeah, so you, you can do it if you want to do it. So you can do it. Anyway, I think we need to begin to round up now because our time is up. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, we're able to round up. We finished ATP without rushing through. Oh, uh, that's, that's, we were shaking a lot of tables, so some people. Were, yeah. I know, I know. I've already one mothers that today is going to be table shaking, uh, uh, affair. 
All right. So just to say that this program has been brought to you by ACP, and some of you may be wondering what is Active Pediatricians Foundation. So Active Child Foundation, we do a lot of things um, beyond what we do online, which is health education and all that. We also provide, we do community medical outreaches to communities in indigent places. And then we also do uh, ed seminars, training workshops for professionals, for parents. Um, we are on Facebook group. Uh, we have our Facebook page. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. All, all our journey is about making sure that uh, we, we we keep you educated. So if, if you want to be part of ATP, you are, you are, you are welcome to be part of us. We'll be very happy to have you. And uh, you can always ask your questions. Uh, if you if you still have questions after this um, program, you don't need to worry because it's just a one hour program. If you still have questions, you can go to our Facebook group and drop your questions there. Uh, we are always there 24 six. So uh, from Mondays to Saturdays, you can drop your questions. And one of our professionals or moderators will be able to answer your questions for you. All right. So we are almost running up. Um, I think I have one more question now. Ah, oh, okay, no, that's another dimension. Okay. All right, this is from Alia. Is there anything one can do to hasten the growth of the teeth? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, yes, I've seen the question. So, why do you want to explain the growth of the teeth of your baby? Uh, mother said, uh, this is my mother. I, start eating chicken. I always say, well, that's one of the measures you need as a mom is patience. You really need to be patient. You really need to be patient. There's, there's no hurry. There's no hurry in life. And it's not a competition. I know mothers, we are very competitive. Everybody is monitoring the other person's baby. And whether my baby is able to do this first, ah, my baby is already sitting, oh, my baby is already working. You know? Whether your baby work at nine months or your baby work at one year or maybe you work at 15 months. As far as we are concerned, as long as baby works, we are happy. Baby works, baby works. So whether your baby is brought out the first at four months or at six months or at nine months or at one year, as long as it, I, I, is it that the baby is not eating food or is it that the baby is not talking? I'm not so sure why you really want the teeth to be eating. I don't know. I'm just curious. So, but maybe you may like me, but there's really no absolutely nothing to do. Nothing to do. Just leave the baby alone. They will bring out their teeth when they are ready. It's just like the same thing. I normally say, mothers, people say, when do you begin to sit down the baby? When do you begin to sit them up? When do you see people sitting up babies at three months? Really, please don't do that. And we all just pipe down, mothers. All this uh, worry as if really time a competition for a Nobel Prize for the best best person to bring out or the best person to sit down. It's absolutely unnecessary. I'm 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 really very serious about it. It's absolutely number one. It just gives you unnecessary pressure, unnecessary stress. So please, uh, your baby doesn't need any. Um, uh, anything to hasten the teeth or anything to uh, we don't need we don't need none of those things. So just leave them alone. When the baby is ready, it's it's performance. I hope that's uh, I hope that helps us. <laughs> All right. So okay. Okay. So we wrap up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. It's yeah. I hope we have all learned. I've learned a lot. And you know, Dr. Bimi, I joined ACP just when I had my first baby. And my mom had already prepared the sitting powder on our way. <laughs> but you know, with everything I've learned, I didn't let her use it. And now my phone is fine. It grew mm -hmm. well without any sitting powder or any solution. <laughs> and nothing. And it's doing great. Mm -hmm. So really, we, we need to, you know, sometimes we might be scared, but these things are correct. Dr. Bimi is a professional. <laughs> at this field. So please trust her and mm -hmm. just do as she has said. You don't have any reason to regret. Seriously. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Bimi. <laughs> Thank you very welcome. much. You're at welcome. least I am a living testimony. <laughs> and I want others to join in as well. Mm. It's, it's been exciting. It's been interesting. And I'm learning yeah. more by the day. So three things she said we should take away. Mm. Not all pooing and stooling and temperature 
is saying no. If your child is having symptoms, please go to the hospital. Sitting solution, please do not use any, they do not need it. The professional has said it. Please, let's try to, you know, adhere to all of that. Thank you very much, Dr. Bimi. Final words. <laughs> okay, yeah, just to say, just to thank everyone for joining us this morning again, and to say that this program has been brought to you by Axi Pediatrician uh, Foundation, and you can uh, support us. I'm looking for, uh, well, uh, yes, okay, that's what I'm looking for. So you can support us and we'll be very happy. Nothing's too small. Like we rightly said, beyond, um, okay. Sorry, okay, let me just quickly take a question. She's, she's saying that a baby is actually one year and there's no thing. So, but the baby is well. Oh, baby okay. is so thank you, Alia. Alia, so see the dead thing. There's no, your baby is fine. Nothing's wrong with your baby. Like I said, some babies may not bring out their first seeds even until one year, even until 13 months, and it's still normal. But the dentist wants you to come and see them as one year. So just please see the dentist. I can now understand why you are you're worried about the okay. um and the why, why you want to extend the teeth. So it's not like yeah, uh, okay, I understand. Sorry <laughs> if I came out on you, but then but see, don't worry, there's nothing to do to extend the teeth. But see the dentist and they will advise you for that. Yes. So, like we said, this program has been brought to you by Active Pediatrician Foundation and beyond what we do on Facebook or uh, ACP Life, we have our group discussions also weekly on our Facebook group. And they, on our Facebook group, we can always ask your questions. You can always ask any question you have uh, from Monday to Saturday and we answer you. And we also do community medical outreaches and we do so many things for indigent children. And there are many ways you can support ACP. You can give as little as 1,000 naira every month to, our, to support our outreaches and you can see our account details there. If you want to buy our tickets, you can also let us know. You can sponsor our programs. Uh, ACP Life Camp is open for sponsorship and you can advertise your program on our ACP Live or on our Facebook group. So in any way you want to support us, to keep on uh, improving well-being of Nigerian children and to keep on um, uh, promoting child health intelligence on the social media, you are welcome. If you want to reach us, you can uh, call us uh, and or you can email us on activepediatricians at gmail.com or ask us activepediatricians.com. Or if you come to our group, we will we'll give you all our details We'll be happy to have you join us. So thank you so much uh, for everyone who has participated this morning. And if you have more questions, please head over to our Facebook group and you can drop your questions there. And one of our professionals, will, uh, our moderators, will provide your answers as soon as possible. All right, so we are very good today. We finished right on time. So have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah.